my dudes. I made this. Today's video is about skateboards. Um, I collage skateboards and I've only actually been doing it since last year. I um, went to a book fair and I got a bunch of Archie comics really cheap. And I, um, I came home wanting to collage something and I had a blank skateboard in my garage so uh, I made an Archie board and you will see that board today uh, in the video. So I will jump right in. Um, I'll show you how I made this start to finish, like my process and everything. Um, that means that you will see me cutting up pieces of comic books. If you're squeamish about that, I don't really know how to help you. You're the one who pressed play on the video, but the only bit you won't see is me sticking down this sort of outer edge on the board, because um, I just honestly forgot to record it, I'm sorry. <laughs> that bit's pretty boring anyway, but I will explain how to do it um, and just everything. So yeah, this board is actually for sale. Uh, it's in my shop right now, link in description. Um, and if you would like your own board but a different character, I would love to make that for you. Um, I might include all the different boards I've made in this video so you can see the plethora of them. Um, but yeah, hope you guys are having a sick day. Enjoy all of this. We're just going to jump right in. Thanks guys. These little squares you see here are the first thing I stick onto the board, but actually the last thing that I cut out of the comic once I'm just dealing with the scraps. And I stick these down as a border around the board so that none of that wooden light brown shade peeks through once the bigger pieces are on top. And you can sort the pieces that I cut out and stick down into three different groups. The first is these medium sized comic panels that make up the bulk of the board. The second are any titles or names or interesting little shapes I find that I could use to fill in any gaps in the design. And the third are these big, gigantic, dynamic pieces that will be the last things that I stick onto the board. So right now I'm in a big old mess of comic book pieces. I'm trying to decide the big sort of dynamic shots, as I call them, um, that I want to put on this board. And I have choices, but I don't love the choices. So I'm sitting here going back and forth because this middle piece, perfect. That's exactly where I want it. I think it's gonna look fantastic with everything behind it. And then we just fit everything else in and definitely gonna put this piece because she looks adorable. And I've got these other bigger pieces, but they just feel a bit like repeaty, you know? And she looks so dull in this piece compared to that one. And I also have this one where she looks adorable and she's in her dress, but everything else she's in has spider woman suit. So it just doesn't, just doesn't really fit. And honestly, I could do this for hours and I'm sure I will find an answer soon, but right now I'm just not sure. This is what I ended up landing on for the design of that very, very top layer. So enjoy a bit of a speed run through this process while I place all the tiny pieces and then we'll have a close up look and talk about why I did what I did. This is how we're looking with that first layer, all the small pieces. And I'm not really paying attention to what is actually in the picture because all the pictures that I've cut out of the comics, I know I already like them. So what I'm actually focusing on is color because this comic, as you can see, it has a lot of blues and purples and pinks, which is awesome and like a fun color scheme. But if everything on here was, you know, this, 
this color scheme, this blue, this purple, this pink, it would kind of look a little bit boring and nothing would stand out. So I've gone through and I found all the pieces I had that had green and orange and I've made sure to put as many of those in here as I can. And I just feel like it really sort of differentiates everything and makes everything stand out a bit more. So I've got all the big pieces up here and just to have a look before I glue anything down, we're just gonna pop them over the top. See if, you know, I've created something that's so ugly it literally explodes, which I doubt. And then <laughs> if I like it, uh, we will glue down that first layer, wait for it to dry, and then glue down the second layer. And I am recording this on my phone, soz, because my camera's there <laughs> and it's recording the long stuff. But here's how she's looking. I honestly doubt after watching me place all of these that you guys want to individually watch me Mod Podge all of this on. So I'm just, I'm not going to bother recording that. That's crazy town. You've already watched me place it all. But I'm going to Mod Podge all the smaller bits first and wait for them to dry and then stick down the big pieces. Maybe I'll film sticking down the big pieces in case you guys are confused about how Mod Podge works or you've never used it before. Let's do that. Alrighty. Hi, welcome to the strangest angle you've ever seen in your life, um, where you can see the dirty part of my studio. Just don't look at it. This bit, not for you. This bit, for you. And I'm definitely not using my phone camera propped up by a paintbrush. That's not what's happening. So I have just stuck this base layer down. And I thought um, for anyone who's never used Mod Podge before or just wants to see the sticky downy phase, I will show you. So, got my Mod Podge. I have a second paintbrush that is not the one propping up my camera. And I've got all my big pieces. So I'll do like this massive one right in the center. And then we'll change angles because this is Crazy Town Express. But Mod Podge is apparently, well, Mod Podge is essentially just like very fancy PVA glue. But I'm just gonna go ham with it Get a bunch of it, very, very simple. Slap it on the back. Um, I try to get it on like every single corner and just across the whole thing. And don't leave anything out because otherwise you might get, it might like peel up or curl up at the corner because when you put this on, you are wetting it. So, you know, you wet paper, it goes a little funky town. And we wanna get the whole thing glued down. We'll start with this middle piece, so line her up. Now I've got all these beautiful other Gwens underneath her that I don't want to cover up, but I guess that's what I get. Well and try to smooth it down all in one direction because you might get little like bumpies underneath it, and I'll show you a close-up of this in a sec um, but sometimes I also just use the leftover Mod Podge on my brush and just go around the edges and just with my finger really stick her down because a we don't want it to peel up but we also don't want it to peel up like after I've posted it <laughs> so we just want to make sure it's as stuck down as it can be and once all these bigger pieces are stuck um, I will go over the skateboard with a layer of Mod Podge as well make it shiny and yeah, all right. Let's leave this weird dimension and enter the close-up dimension. And here we are with everything actually stuck down. There's a few sort of creases here and there that I will sort of put more Mod Podge on and squeak it out, squeeze it out. But I'm loving the colors. I'm loving that it's not just blue, pink, purple. Uh, and now all it needs is a whole extra layer of Mod Podge on top. Uh, I let it dry overnight and then she's ready. Uh, and I do, I have like a little look at all the pieces on the edge, like her finger here is sort of bent down so it doesn't stick out. Um, and I have a look at the back as well. I mean, I normally like to leave it this way um, unless the person who's commissioned it, you know, wants it a particular color or, whatever they want. Um, just so 
it doesn't have anything extra on it if they want to put hooks or whatever they want so that they can um, attach it to the wall because you don't want to do a whole wall of comics here and then stick a hook in there and then the hook ends up just ripping the comics off and the, the board falls to the floor. <laughs> so this is how she's looking. I will do a whole extra thing of Mod Podge, like I said, and then she'll be done. So let's body do it. I did just want to add, as I am doing this layer of Mod Podge, that I do like to go up and down because while I love this product, uh, the streaks of it are something that you can see once it's dry. So I like to go in just one direction um, because if I was to go everywhere, you'd be able to see it in the light once it's dry. So just real like confident up and down and don't worry about, you know, this sort of white streakiness that goes away. Um, but you can definitely see the direction that you paint it in once it's dry. So big ups and downs. So this is how our Gwen Stacy Ghost Spider board looks on the wall. I've got two little hooks under here uh, that my Harley Quinn board normally sits on. She is now <laughs> on the table for the moment. This board is actually um, in my shop right now, if you love it. Harley Quinn is definitely one of my favorite characters. Um, and if you like Harley but don't love this design, I have a lot more Harley comics so I can make a different one. But I just love her color scheme. The red and the blue looks so good on a board. Um, this ghost spider board, I almost didn't want to put these big pieces on top because all of the smaller pieces just look so good as you would have just seen by themselves. And I was umming and ahhing about it. And as an example, I'll show you what a board looks like that doesn't have big pieces on top of it. It's literally here. This is the first board I ever made. It's made out of Archie Comics, which is what Riverdale on Netflix is based on. So it does have like this sort of piece uh, and like a little Veronica over here. But all of their comics are very, very, very square and they are all exactly the same size. So there were no sort of massive pieces and I couldn't... Um, sort of make the shapes flow in the same way that I do with this where there's you know vertical pieces and sideways pieces and it's like a big puzzle and when you look at it it's like a little bit of an adventure you know it's just hey squares <laughs> I do also have like books and books and books and books of Archie comics so if you did want an Archie skateboard for yourself I could absolutely make you one as well and I'd love to these colors are so fun and they're so retro and I always get the images where they're actually saying something because honestly like almost every single thing they're saying on here is completely out of pocket and insane and it just looks so cool. So here's where we are. I think they look fab. Let's go see what she looks like in the sun. Here she is in all her glory you guys. Remember this board is for sale in my shop through the link in my description. If you like this video or this board, feel free to do that, like it, comment, subscribe, or I'll call your mum. And I will see you guys in two weeks for my next video. Please enjoy the last segment in my video where I take two of my painted cards off my wall and paint them. If you don't know nothing about that series, you're about to find out. Where have you been? We're three videos in now. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. Have a good day. Bye. Welcome to another one of my card painting videos. Here are all the paints and poskas I used on my cards today. I did tell myself I wasn't going to use any poskas for this round because the first two cards last fortnight were just 100% posca, but hey, you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make it use anything but an acrylic paint pen. The first number today is number 52. And listen, Maybe next video I will veto my little system here because we're just pulling way too many blues off this wall. This first card is this really beautiful metallic blue color. And the glitters in this pigment made me think of like magic and childhood. And I was almost going to paint Tinkerbell straight onto this thing, but I thought, no, it's blue. Let's do a bit of a blue character. And I'll leave you guys for a second to see if you can guess who it is because... He is upside down, and you are only going to see his butt on this card. Did 
Did you guess it? It's Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. He's one of my favorite characters from really anything ever. And I have several Eeyore plush toys in my house. I don't care. I'm nearly 30 years old. I love Eeyore. Now, I didn't do like a pencil tracing of this character at all, but I did have a picture of him from Google like up in front of me while I was painting this. So you'll see me, especially with my black lines, do a bit of hesitating, just making sure that my lines are in the right place. And when I was done coloring, I came back over all the lines with my little black Posca again. Now, because Eeyore is kind of like a lonely character, I decided to paint the second card in like kind of the same theme. I didn't just want to do like two, you know, Disney characters or two cartoon characters. I was, I really sat down and I was like, what else is lonely? Like I sat there and I brainstormed what other character we could have. And as for the color of the second card, I actually just did again what I did in the last video where I just let a friend pick a number. And if you leave a number in the comments, you can pick the second card in my next video. So she picked 64 and all of those late numbers close to 72, I will give you a little hint, are like metallics and fluoros and these sort of more textured cards. And the numbers in the lower range are your more like traditional matte colors all through the rainbow. So keep that in mind when you're commenting. I do wonder if anyone will be able to guess this one um, because the background is watercolor paint. I also used watercolors to paint the image and honestly, I don't think it's all that clear until I actually write the name on the card. But you know what? Art is subjective and I made it and you guys are watching it. So I guess that's what makes it good. I am painting the planet Pluto, <laughs> the loneliest planet. And if you're familiar with the HD, very colorful image of Pluto that I am emulating right now, I am proud of you. I am one of those jaded gen y kids who is like pluto's a planet i don't care that he's tiny look at him he's so beautiful and for the people who actually want to hear about my artistic method and not hear about me whine about a space dwarf i have painted a circle in this really 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 light purple shade that you would have seen at the beginning in an acrylic color just so that could go like really flat over the watercolor and then i could paint on top of that I've used watercolors and then Poscas to create some texture. And then I went around this side of the planet with some black watercolor and then a black Posca just to remove it from the background, like bring it into the foreground and give it some depth. And then I just couldn't help myself. I had to turn this little card into like a slogany poster for the planet Pluto. <laughs> this channel is 100% hashtag Pluto is a planet. I don't care. Anyway, I am being completely insane. Here is a close up of our Justice for Pluto poster that you will see stuck on a bus stop in a neighborhood near you. And I did add some sparkles to our Eeyore because I just felt like the background, even though it was metallic, it was a little bit boring. And here are both the cards for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments. I will see you guys in a fortnight. And if you want me to pick your card, leave your favorite number in the comments. I am so in love with how this is going to look when it's done. I'm probably going to say that in every video. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. Lost inside my mind.